All right, guys, and welcome back to episode 19 of the uh, the Raid series. Now, I promised you guys an episode where I would just smash through some factory, talk about why I'm doing things. If I miss some things, I might put it in the, in the post. I might actually just talk over some stuff. Uh, I'll try my best to keep it as all as fluent as possible. And I'm going to go into yeah, factory and just try and get some PvP happening and get some kills for you. So um, my first tip is when you go to factory, if you can, take a face shield at uh, level 2 Ragman. You can really only take a Kiva and a face shield. Um, it isn't that bad. Yeah, a Kiva face shield is a level 3 face shield with a level 3 helmet. So, we've got pistols and shotguns. Uh, this armor, I can't remember where we got it from. We got it from something, but it's a, a level 4 armor. So, we're going to go take that in. And I think once we've got it, we're going to take this MP5 in. All right. Now, uh, perfect perfect scenario, you know, you'd have AP 6.3 the entire time, which is an armor penetrating ammo. I'll have the stats up on the screen. And then uh, you've got, you know, your PST GZH. I'll have this as my backup ammo. Now, if we go against someone who's really sweaty geared, like... Alton and that, we're not going to have any chance unless we get him in the legs. But for this, I think we'll be right with what we've got. Um, I would like to chuck a cheeky foregrip on. Maybe like an arc. Let's just see. I just want to see something cheap. I don't, I don't, don't want to spend too much money on a foregrip. How much is this? 7,000 rubles. There we go. And that's pretty much got this MPX looking nice and schmick. Now, um, we could go with a backpack. I'm going to try and... How many have we got? All right, let's go with just one backpack. And meds. Now, the meds, when I go factory, I like to take as much as I can in my uh, container. And that way, I don't have to stress too much about... Med slots. Now, like, we're not really rolling it in cash. But we, we're not we're not poor either. So, we can, we can run the gauntlet here and see how we go. Um, hopefully, it's not too bad. Um, but hopefully it should go pretty smooth. Now, we have a lot of insurances to claim. Um, I forgot that I accidentally uh, insured with Prapper a couple of times. So we do need to receive these. We have an AKM here, but I don't want to really use this one on factory. I really want to save this one for the uh, the shoreline quest where we've got to kill Gaz with an AKM. So we've already got an extra one there. Now, I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure we would have got the other one back from Therapist or Chance. Um, so that's always a bonus to do. Have a quick look. See what have we got from back from Therapist. Ah, so that scav got out with it. So it's all good. Um, but yeah, so we've got to, we've got a half decent loadout here. We can't take a lot of damage on this armor. So you see, see how it's 33 durability. When they're new, I'll have to check on this one. Um, they start at 40. After about 50%, I pretty much just get rid of them. Um, and they can be expensive to repair. So we're going to go with this. We'll see how we go. Uh, I'm going to try and call out my plays as much as possible. I'm going to put that like that. Have that there. I'd mean, I like to take a backup med if I can. Um, we're trying to make it make it out alive as much as possible. But we're also going to try and get out of the raids when we're in trouble as well. Um, we did finish that uh, Oli Logistics quest as well. Which was from Ragman. Um, so we don't need to worry about having the Oli Logistics key anymore. We're actually going to sell that one right now as well. Not a lot of money but it's, it all adds up. And that could be selling in the background. Is there anything else up here we could sell? Water purifier. These actually sell for quite a bit at the moment, so it's definitely worth fucking it up. 70,000. Go to 70. Rules T. Get another 19,000 for that, so. Get rid of all those things. We're full on head, health, health and that. All we're going to do is try and get a couple kills and uh, get out and do that a few times. Over. We're going to ensure through Therapist. Because it's trying to do keys or something. Now, a lot of people say don't worry about insuring on Factory. Um, I like to ensure for the fact that, say my armor's pretty much destroyed, but I can kill someone else with their armor. Uh, I could toss their armor and take theirs. Same with rigs. Um, if you get a, someone's got a really good rig on, you can chuck your Blackrock rig or whatever rig you've got. You could chuck that and then pick up another one instead. So um, that's the reasoning behind it. I'm going to crank up the volume up a little bit here. I have the game volume. Like, this one doesn't affect you guys at all, but this affects me. Um, I have the game volume pretty loud when I'm playing. It's probably not good for my hearing. 
I get, I get asked about that, uh, how loud I have the game a lot. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend having it as loud as I have if you care about your hearing. But, um, you know, what you do, sometimes it's what you do. I could really say right now, because I'm wearing my, uh, my Christmas merch right now, which, um, if you're interested in buying it, it's still available at the merch store, but you won't be able to get it before Christmas, of course. Merry Christmas to everyone out there, if you're having a... Uh, hopefully you're going to get to see some family and have some enjoyable times. All right, so we're deploying. Always good. Um, we want to get into the raid, get to a position where we're not um, in trouble. But there's a few spots. I'll try and explain as best I can as I go on, but you, there's a few spots that are just really shit to start at if we don't have it first. The glass windows is always the worst. All right, so this one's the actual the middle of the map. Now, I always like to move away from here really quickly because there's, there's a spawn underneath, one over there and one over there. If you If... If they're in those positions, they can they can trap you in that spawn. So if you take too long, you're in trouble. But if you get to here, you sometimes get them as they're coming over towards you. Now, crosshair placement is important. I think I just heard a noise above me, so I'm going to move, move up into a better position. Now, hear this crunch? Hear that crunch that I just had then? This one right here. This one here. That st that is exactly that spot, and it never sounds like no, no other spot in that area sounds like that. If you hear that crunch, someone's in that area. But you definitely want to be hearing out for that. Now checking for jackets quickly for keys because they make good money. I leave both doors open. I'll try my best to show you an opportunity why I do that. So that's that the the stripper there what we call it stripper um stands out you heard how it sounded um the metal over there pistoling over here Ooh, he's up top you can see Shit, he's having a fun time going down there. Um, you want to be listening out to the spawns, uh, the, the noises that stand out in this map. Now, there's someone shooting me. There's someone shooting over here. You're hearing that scav, he's over there, which means he's pushed the player that was over there that spawned over there. Now, there's only probably about nine spawns in factory. There used to be only six, and they've changed that. Watch out for people hiding behind that box right there as well. Um, always crosshair placement is important on this map. Always have your crosshair right where you're going to be, uh, right where the enemy's going to be. You'll see, like, if you ever watch Shroud play PUBG, his crosshair placement is honestly insane. There's another scab there. There was definitely another player down here. Um, and, and, like, I'm too lazy to play like that, but it, it's definitely... It's definitely something that's pretty insane to watch. Uh, a good player with good crosshair placement. It's, it's just insane to watch. And while you're looting, you can always reload some mags. Definitely worth doing. Um, I'm just going to grab these keys just for the sake that money's money. We're not rolling in it. Now down here, there's uh, one of the extracts here. You can open that door with a factory key. Uh, the factory key now has 50 uses. We're going to go down and loot that scav. This glass hallway, it's it's my most hated spot in the map. Right, if you're hanging out in this glass hallway, you're asking you to get, get fucked on. Because you've got nowhere to escape. You can only go back and forth. For example, that guy there. If, I, if he was, like, outgeared me, you know, had... He could have had me. If, if, if he had better gear, he could have had me then. We've now got... That there, we'll put that there. It's there, doing this, trying, trying to do this nice and quick. Put all these single squares into a single square spot. Now we kind of got lucky on this one because there's no super geared guys running around. But there's definitely someone on the other side of the map.
Now, um, we're going to reload. It's going to put the, high, the, the mag with the most amount of ammo into it. So half of 50 is around 25 rounds. We're going to push for this top guy. See if we get the last guy. Listening out for a player. Always trying to keep our crosshair placement somewhere the enemy's going to be. Now, I always find that this end of the hallway that I'm standing on now is actually... Oh, it's good. There's someone below me. He was running out around that bottom bit. Listen for that door. He just opened the door. But there's a guy running for the extract right now. Now, if you hear that door, you can beat him. You can get him before they extract. He just shut the second door. Now he's, he's fretting. Wow. He got so lucky with that. I should, What I should have done then, in hindsight, peeked to see if he's in the actual main spot. And then uh, if he's not, then we know he's on the left. And then I could have just pre-fired it or something. He got really lucky with that. He must have got me square in the face. This is how it is. And that's how Factory can play out sometimes. Um, I always play that play the exact same. Besides maybe that last little bit might tweak a little bit. But generally, they're going straight for the extract, not the um, that spot there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight back to Prapper, try and get, uh, sorry, the Therapist, get another loadout straight up from him. Um, what we're going to do is instead of a face shield this time, we're going to go like this. And I think I might just take a Mosin, just for a bit of a laugh. We're going to have, go no armor, Mosin, into Factory. We've got a Mosin here with actually thought like that. So let's go with this. We're going to repair our armor. And uh, we've got plenty of Mosin ammo. So what we're going to do is go 15 there. So make sure that's topped up. We have the other 20. Uh, 25 there. We'll reload this inside there. We need to now top up our health. And we're going to go back in. But yeah, like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that play any different besides the fact that I should have um, that last little bit. You can peek to try and kill him. So generally, I actually don't just stand in the doorway. I kind of keep moving. So I peel in and go straight at him because then that way you're a moving target instead of standstill target with your head exposed. Um, but after I saw that he was in that corner, I should have pulled back for a second. And then pre-fired as I came around. But he had a really quick reaction time. He did a really good job of uh, getting the kill on me. All right. So, might just leave that there for the extra health. And let's get back into another factory raid. All right. Deploying. So, when we get in there, we'll top up the rest of this bag. You can do it inside the um, inside your hideout. Or certainly hide hideout stash. But I, personally, I just I just do it in raid. You get the extra uh, point in, in sniping for, you know, loading another round to the chamber and... I need to level it up anyway, so... Thanks for us last time. Now, we do have the contacts on this one. And, um... All the high sports. And no face shield. So, it's something to take note of. You just don't want to... You don't want to get those face ups. You want to try and play... Your strengths then. We can go down below. Watch out down here. Might. I heard a guy run into the middle, sorry. That's a guy with a pistol there. I feel like the guy's right here, because I heard the metal going up. He's definitely in this section. That sounds like shivering to me. I was getting held down at the other end of the hallway by the sounds of it. It sounded like he just went up stripper. That middle staircase over there, I caught. That's a gear play down. Yeah, that shouldn't Fuck. That was a Vepa Hunter from behind. Damn it. 
That must have been a third spawn over that side. The third player from that side. The same guys last time? Are you serious? That's the wrong death screen. It wasn't the same guys last time. Unfortunately, it was the wrong death screen. So we don't even know who killed us. We don't know what happened then. That sucks. But, yeah, so we had the first player we shot. He went down. Um, sorry, the sh player that came down the bottom, we shot him. We hit him in the arm. So it would have been nice to get that chest kill there. It would have been one less, like, noise to worry about. Uh, we're going to switch back over to a normal mode in infantry this time. Do you really want to go? really want to go face shield. It just gives you that much more security. 50,000 rubles, but... Makes me going against pistolings. It makes pistolings... Makes him completely useless. Um, so... I don't know what I think about this outer aid healing thing. I, I think about it pretty often. I, I really just think it, it penalizes people that um, are not playing the game as... Sorry, who don't play the game very much. And Because once you get to higher levels, you get so much money, it's like, eh, who cares? But right now, like, we're trying to, you know, like... Um, we're trying to... Upgrade the hideout, buy items to quests and that, and it's just punishing as all hell. But once you get to like the point where it's like you don't need money anymore, the quests and the hideout, you know. So I don't know. It's it's not super annoying, but it's definitely punishing to the, for the early people that are still learning the game. I don't think it was necessary. I'll, I'll say it here. I don't really think it was necessary. It doesn't really do anything. It's just another money sink. But I suppose when they're they're gonna add a button where you know. You should, you die in a raid, you're going to be like, hey, 6,000 rubles, and you've already magically healed. It's just like, well, I've got another 6,000 rubles per raid you know, for each death. It's what it is. Have to wait and see. Anyway, hopefully we get back another raid, and we can redeem from the losses from the last one. That was just really unfortunate. A Vepa Hunter guy came in, was uh, in that back area. I just didn't want to get a guy coming around the corner and peeking me in the head, and he's, like pre-firing that spot and getting me in the head. That's why I moved to the uh, outside bit, he peeks that corner again. We've got the uh he's gonna we're gonna see him before he pre fires the spot they thought we were in. And then if he came down below through this uh through the bathroom, uh we can do a quick spin around. I wouldn't normally go out there like that if that first guy had a gun, but he didn't. He was either a hatchling or a pistoling, and the pistoling wasn't gonna be in a, a, a threat from behind. But, you know, sometimes there's a third player with a, a Vepa Hunter. Is what it is. Right, moving into raid number three. Got the deploying, which is nice. And um, let's, try, let's try and come out with some gear. Very unlucky with that first raid, but second raid, we, we obviously stuffed up. All right. And this is why a glass hallway is really bad, because we've now got position on that glass hallway. And if someone spawns in there right now, we've got nothing on us. And there's another spawn just outside there, and sometimes they run into glass hallway. It's insane. It's such a suicide move. The only time it works is when you're down the far end with like a Velde site and you can see back down it and have really good obs. Now there is a spawn down the other end of that, but it's not very common to have someone spawn there and over to down here. Oh my god, I missed him. Oh my god, I missed him again. Oh, we got him in the end. He just opened up the uh, pumping station side door. I didn't kill him. Why did I do that? Oh, he opened it. Me hit farm. Who's the bully? We 
know there's someone inside the um inside here, but we just don't know where. I think up this staircase can be quite a threat. You Stop the bleed. Oh, fuck. Didn't hear him. That was unfortunate. Shit. <coughs> that was the piss the hatch when we were killed at the start. Jeez, guys, I'm not I'm not doing well. I'm not doing well. But I'm trying to explain my thought patterns. That was a bit slow and sloppy then for uh, talking while firing. I will try and keep improving on those skills to be able to talk talk about my combats. So I didn't actually anticipate him being at the bottom of the staircase. I, I, it's not a place that I normally see someone. Uh, at, at usually they're on that the first platform because you can see down into the pit from there. That caught me off a little bit. We're going to go a little bit all out now. Um, I think we've got time for probably one more. So we're going to go all out. I'm going to try and get the best ammo I can afford. Best armor I can afford, and let's get into a raid and just try and decimate. I'm gonna play my usual very aggressive play style, and if I fall back, on, fall behind on the talking, I'll um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put it like a commentary over the top. I'll, I'll try my best to keep talking as we go. Now, um, armor wise, we want to wear a face shield with some sort of good armor. Uh, we're gonna take that backpack. You want, okay, so when you're playing Factory, if you're going up against a Mosin or a Vepahunter, they can one-shot you if you're wearing anything under a Gen 4. Now, I'm going to go with a Gen 4, which is something that I probably can't afford right now. We're going to use anyway. Um, how are we going to... I think that they're sitting there at 250k at the moment. Let's find out. So, Gen 4. So, keep scrolling down until we see one. 280k. Oh, this one's 298 Ooh, we got it. Sweet. All right. And then we're going to need... Um, we're going to need a helmet. So I want to use the ZSH helmet. It's a really solid helmet, if you ask me. That for a quest. Euro, sell the wallet. Take that with us. We don't add it at all. Uh, what else do we need to... I was going to need about 50k for the helmet. These can come. No. If you want all or nothing. All or nothing. Alright. So if we were to go... ZSH helmet. 51k there. The one we want. We want the black one. Really, they sold them for uh, 45k. And we need 14k for that. Alright, we've got 12 rubles. We're going strong. Means no insurance, all right? Going all out. Front, full clear. And, um, no, no, it's no buts. No maybes. Can't afford the insurance. We're doing it. All right. So, what I usually do is I charge spawns. So, I'm trying to catch people out before they're even moved into anything uh, or into a better position. And the reason why I do this is if you can kill two or three people off very early, then you don't have to worry about them later on. So when you're, they're in their spawns, you know they're there. Or at least you've got a pretty good chance that they're going to be at one of the spawns close by. The first thing I'm going to do is pop painkiller. I'm going to start running. and it's Only a little bit, but that's what it is. Now we're going straight for this spawn. Make sure I'm on forward. auto. I'll watch this guy right, right here. I'm going to push now. Oh. 
gonna quickly heal. Two down, and we know there's three players left. Oh, we stuffed up a little bit there on the first guy, but it's all good. Now, I should be healing in before searching. You go heal and then search. Armor's still good. Base shield's still good. So when I'm pressing tab there, I'm looking to at uh, stuff like armor, where my ammo is at. I want to show these these jackets, these keys. I've been finding so many good keys recently on uh, on my on the streams that they're definitely worth just checking when you get an opportunity. But that sounded like a Vep Hunter to me or an Adar. So quickly checking those those two spots there, making sure there's no players down there. Coming down here, looting this guy, grabbing his pistol, searching that one at the same time, getting his helmet. And we're at rock and rolling. Moving nice and quick. I got a really bad habit of going single fire, auto fire, and just making sure. But I seem to always forget to be on full auto. Quick mag check. Checking inside here because there's sometimes people camping there. Um, they're waiting for people to go into the extract. They just lay there prone. That's coming here. Muzzle pl placement is very important. He's above me, running. We're moving on so quick. We hear him down the other end. It's an eight arm by the sounds of it. On the closer door. Trying to get. He's down there. Trying to keep 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 position on people. Now it's all about noise, so I've got to be quiet for a sec. If I haven't stuffed this up, I should get behind him. Dab. Listening for noises, always checking out angles, checking out corners, and making sure we're not getting sne sneaked up on by people like that. There's definitely someone just outside here. Never seen a sawn off eight, uh, 870 like that. It was a player scav. It's interesting. Player scavs are always sort of searching their pockets, backpacks, and rigs, whereas scavs are only search pockets and backpack. R rule of thumb. I think that guy might have, like, after he. Killed the guys inside the room. I think he might have ran out. Or he tried to make an attempt to run out. Coming down the end of the hallway. That crunch, that crunch I was talking about before, that's the crunch you always want to hear for. Or listen for. Got a drink. 114 keys, actually not a bad kid. Hold on, I know a lot of this is moving really quick, but I'm trying my best to explain as I go. All right, we're going to try and push towards that player. If he's over this side, sweet. If he's not, oh well, that's, that's just life. I didn't kill that guy down the bottom, so you've got to be careful. If there's someone there, see how there's blood spots there? I know it's unlikely. But you should really just quick, quickly check underneath there as you're coming through. He could have got shot from anywhere, though. It did sound before like there was someone just inside this bit here, and you can get behind that blue tarp right there. We're going to go check the, uh, the key extract. Or dead body there. I hope that's a dead body. 
Make sure, shoot him in the head. No, move very quick. So there was a dead player in the uh, in the other room. Dead player in the office. Dead player there, and we killed two. There's only one player max left alive. Or one PMC. I'm checking. Always keep a muzzle placement. Check, make sure you check that box there. Sometimes, sometimes they hide in that gap. And try and check your best on that side there before you go around this side. High in the corner. You don't have to be close to the wall. See, he's extracted. I thought that's what happened. Could still be inside here. So check around the corner as you go in. I don't think you can sit. Oh, you can sit behind the box, but we had to sit there for a long time. And that's it. Look, first few raids were a bit rocky. Uh, I did. The, the armors do help. It, it depends on what you go against as well. Vepper hunters are really rough in factory because. One shot to the chest with majority of the armors. Anything under a Gen 4, you're probably going to die in one shot. Um, same with Mosins. So if people are going in with Vepper Hunters and Mosins a lot, you're going to die all the time. I've preached a lot in the past about how I think Vepper Hunters and Mosins should kind of get... I, don't, I honestly don't think they should do less damage. I think it should be a really devastating round. And I know Mosins are really common in the world. However, and particularly in Russia. However... It does really detract when all your gunfights are over, you know, in a single bullet from a naked guy with a Mosin. I, it, it, I feel like it really detracts from the combat. Like, when you get in that combat where you're, like, taking a few shots at each other and missing and all that kind of stuff and weaving and ducking and, and flanking, that's where the, the really good fun fights are. When you just, like, tap a guy with a Mosin, tap a guy with a Mosin, and then, like, that's over. I feel like it detracts from the, the fight. The only solution to it is in the availability of the ammunition. That's that's really the only way. Have lots of the guns, but because there's so much conflict going on, have the ammunition scarce. I think that's really the only way or make ammo so expensive that it makes people feel like they can only take in five or ten rounds. I don't know. But uh it's just a it's just the what's what would you call it? The the development of the game, how the game's progressed, the progression of the game, that's what I want to say. So that's what's happened from when the Mosin was introduced, now the Vepper Hunter. I think probably, if anything, I th scavs should not have Vepper Hunters. If playing scavs have them, sure, whatever. But scavs, they're so accurate while walking. Or ra yeah, walking that shit when they're running. It's just really devastating. It's like when you've got your best gear on, you die on two bullets instead of one. If you, you're not wearing the best armor, you die on one instead. So I think as a new player, it's very punishing. But it is it, it is good at giving fear of scavs. No, no longer, like, do we just go, oh, that's just another scav. And oh, there's, there was times early days where you would just sit there and just be, like, getting shot at. um, what, Like, shot at by a scav. And you'd just be, like, taking on the other PMCs in the room. You're like, I don't care that scav's going to take forever to get through my armor. So it does stop that kind of uh, mentality, which is good. Uh, it, should, it shouldn't be like that. But yeah. So anyway, guys, um, this is probably going to be it for the episode. We got we got the one, one raid down. I should have survived that first one. I, I stuffed that one up. But um, hopefully you guys learned something from this. Just as uh, tonight, I'm pretty sure it's tonight I'm going to be posting this video. Um, I did publish a video on my second YouTube channel with my wife. Uh, we're moving to Europe for 11 months and we're going to be traveling around Europe. If you live in Europe uh, and you want to cash up with us, there's more information in the video talking about how it's going to all go down. As well as if you're just interested in more of how life is with me streaming and, and traveling and everything that's going on, re would really appreciate you guys popping over to that channel, giving it a sub, check, checking out the video, liking it, commenting, doing all that great epic support you guys do. Um, it's it, You guys have already been amazing, but I, I kind of like the idea of sharing more of my life with you guys if you're interested in it. Uh, there's a video I really want to do that's not really related to that, but it's also related to streaming and content creation is I want to do a day in a usual day of my like life which is usually around 18 hours long. I don't get much sleep. I get I work for between 16 and 20 hours a day, uh, like streaming, content creation, and just replying to emails and all this other stuff. And I really want to show you what it's like to really do as much as I do. It's I don't have much of a, a social life. Let's put it that way. You are my social life, you guys. Anyway, so finish up. Thanks for watching another video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. I always do show my Twitch every day of the week, so go down the link below. Give me a follow over there. If you have any Tarkov questions, feel free to hit me up on the live stream or down in the comments below. And lastly, I'll see you next time. Don't you know, pump it up. You got to pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. You got to pump it up.